Ten years ago, Earth Report made a film about the Black Sea. We found a region on the brink of ecological collapse. The pathetic sight of a solitary sea lion in the ruins of a dolphinarium in Georgia became a symbol of a devastated marine environment. It was described at the time as a catastrophe by marine biologist Lawrence Mee. In two or three decades, the Black Sea has lost a large amount of its biological resources and its economic value to the people living around it. That constitutes a catastrophe. The film prompted widespread concern, and over the last decade, there has been a concerted international effort to improve things. Recently, we went back to see how the situation had changed. This is what we found. Along Ukraine's Black Sea coast, there's considerable excitement. Marine species, which until recently had all but vanished, are reappearing. In the last 10 years, we have identified species that we have not seen for more than 20 years. They had vanished. Now, for the first time, they are coming back. Biologists have found three species of crab they haven't seen for 30 years. The once rare seahorse is now much more abundant. And most welcome of all, the economically important Black Sea turbot, until recently an endangered species, is back on sale in fish markets. Across the region, it's the same story. All six countries surrounding the Black Sea report improvements in fish catches and biodiversity. The biggest fishing fleet is based in Turkey. was not much in the past past years but this year again lots of uh, we can see first time i have seen being a fisheries scientist i have heard about the giant form of horse mackerel it's this one it was disappeared before but now it's appeared that's the bonito that's the fish became abundant in the last two years fisherman doesn't know why it became abundant suddenly. 50 years ago, they used to catch abundance of this fish, but during the past decades, there wasn't many. And in the last two years, again, we, ha we have been seeing from the Black Sea lots of this precious fish. Even in Beleaga, Georgia, fish stocks appear to be improving. 10 years ago, we found local fishermen struggling to survive. Five hours at sea and nothing. Look, empty. What are you meant to eat when there are no fish? You can't compare the situation today with what it was like 10 years ago. Then, none of these ships were engaged in fishing. They made a living exporting citrus fruit to Russia and Ukraine. Now, all of them are fishing again. For Ukrainian biologist Boris Alexandrov, it's a long overdue sign that the spiral of death and decline in the Black Sea is finally being reversed. Marine life simply could not cope in the past with the levels of pollution in the sea. Я 
I used to dive in these waters a lot in the 1970s. Then, in the 80s, I stopped almost completely. The water had become so dirty, you could not see anything. The pollution also caused a lot of disease. So you have to remember to always take a shower after swimming. Now it's coming back to life again. Generally, the Black Sea environment is in the recovery stage right now. It's becoming a good place compared to 20 years ago. The sea is on the road to recovery, yet the reasons are far from simple. In the Black Sea port of Odessa, inspectors patrol the docks for signs of pollution. And ships known as cleaners scoop up debris. It's all a sign of a new environmental awareness. We haven't had a lot of pollution incidents in the last few years. But there was a big oil spill this summer. The cleaners were working 24 hours a day to make sure the pollution was localized and the situation fixed. The authorities also fined the guilty party more than 20 million dollars. More importantly, there have been dramatic improvements in the river Danube, by far the biggest source of fresh water flowing into the Black Sea. The great story of the last 15 years is the improvements in the Danube River Basin. The Danube is cleaner now. The pollution has been substantially reduced, specifically from in the pollution level from phosphorus. That means that the pollution reaching the Black Sea is lower. Yet despite these man-made improvements, the most important changes in the sea's ecology are entirely accidental. Last time we visited the area, Mara, the last remaining animal in Georgia's once famous dolphinarium, was a painfully visible sign of a region on hard times. That decline has continued. And once polluting factories and collective farms have closed down. It's caused terrible human hardship. But ironically, the environment has benefited. Toxic algae blooms, which 10 years ago fed on the agricultural pollution, were widespread. Today, they've almost disappeared. There's also been a second unintended improvement in the marine environment. During the 1990s, Black Sea fish stocks were decimated by an invasive species of jellyfish called Nemeopsis, which arrived in the ballast water of ships from the North Atlantic. In 1980s, one jellyfish arrived from the American coasts and it started eating the food of the fish, zooplankton, and this animal increased enormously. Then the fishery went down, collapsed in the Black Sea in 19. 80, end of 1980s, start of 1990s. But then in the late 1990s, it was joined by a second invasive jellyfish. This, unlike the first jellyfish, doesn't feed on zooplankton, but feeds exclusively on the first invader. The Nemeopsis population fell steeply, leading to an almost immediate improvement in fish stocks. Once again, the people of the region had been handed a bonus, an improvement in the quality of the Black Sea 
without them having to take responsibility for past mistakes. Today, as the region's economies begin to recover, that bonus is under threat. As the countries of the Black Sea start to tackle their historic legacy of pollution, they are facing a series of new and unexpected threats. One of them is here, along the Black Sea coast of Bulgaria, where, as the country emerges from its Eastern Bloc isolation, there's a boom in construction. Old communist resorts like the improbably named Sunny Beaches are being turned into major construction sites as developers cash in on its coastal location. In the late 70s, it looked completely different. There were small, two-story hotels which were not closer than 200 meters to each other. A lot of vegetation, quiet, peaceful, enormous beaches, untouched dunes. It looked just lovely. What worries me personally is that this area will not be able to stand this enormous pressure. If it goes beyond the carrying capacity, the impact on the environment will be irrecoverable. It may already be happening. Construction is creeping, often illegally, along the coast. This holiday complex, slap in the middle of a national park, has become a cause célèbre and led to confrontations between developers and environmentalists. The guy was asking from which organizations we are. We said that we are from nature conservation organizations. This is a national park and the building on my back is completely illegal because it is against or not in correspondence with the building regulations uh, in the park. Work has come to a temporary halt. But as the poorly regulated construction boom creeps ever further along Bulgaria's Black Sea coast, it's rapidly outstripping the ability of the region's infrastructure to cope. Sewage has become a major problem. The wastewater management problem around the Black Sea is, is a huge issue, really. Um, there are enormous differences between countries. For example, Romania and Bulgaria are taking huge steps forwards. Turkey is perhaps 10, 15 years further behind that. In Ukraine, the situation is probably of a similar level of order to to where Turkey is now, and in effect there isn't a, a single sewage treatment works in Georgia operating how it was planned to. In fact, in Georgia, raw sewage is pumped straight into the sea. Yet 10 years ago, environmentalists told us they hoped tourism would regenerate the region. Georgia's current prime minister had particularly high hopes of the coastal wetlands at Kolkheti. The most urgent priority for Georgia is the Kolkheti National Park. It's a top priority because through tourism it offers a means of solving the whole region's social and economic problems. Yet today these wetlands face a very different development threat. Some 500 miles east of Georgia, lie the landlocked oil and gas fields of the Caspian. As these are opened up, 
a major part of the oil is exported by tankers through Georgia to the Black Sea. Much of it is destined to arrive here at a brand new oil terminal currently under construction. What disturbs marine scientists is that it's right in the middle of the coastal wetlands. The Kolkata wetlands is a unique place for migratory birds. It's a place that isn't only fascinating for biologists to look at, it's a wonderful place for people to see nature. Green campaigners have moved into the area to canvas local opinion. Their fear is that an expanding oil industry could lead to serious problems of pollution. Oil is a dirty business. One of our concerns in Georgia, as in other countries in the Black Sea, is that the pace of development is outstripping the ability of governments to contain their impacts, to minimize the risks, to take those necessary measures to protect the environment and the human population when things actually go wrong. But energy analysts see oil as providing jobs and revenue, and the image of a dirty, polluting industry as a gross exaggeration. There's absolutely nothing inevitable about oil being polluting. If you look at a new terminal, you, you will find that there's an immense amount of safety equipment is built in right from the start to, to gauge any escape of gas, any escape of liquid, and to take appropriate sort of shutdown and safety action. A lot of stuff is designed so that in effect it's failed safe. That even if something goes a little bit wrong, no harm results from it. Whatever the truth, if the Black Sea is to prosper, it will need to ensure it doesn't repeat the mistakes of the past. In an attempt to stop this happening, the United Nations Development Programme has teamed up with the private sector to raise the level of environmental awareness. The government has its role, but it's not a job that the government alone can do. So we are looking for partnerships. The UNDP is looking for partnerships with the private sector. It recently signed a pioneering five-year partnership with the Coca-Cola company called Every Drop Matters. Over the next five years, the project will encourage public awareness and we will also be encouraging the governments and local communities to build wastewater treatment plants uh, and other uh, appropriate technologies. But however successful the campaign, it comes too late to avoid fundamental changes in the Black Sea's ecology. One of the most significant is the arrival of an invasive species of snail called Rapana. Gradually, over a period of years, it spread and permanently altered the balance of the sea's marine life. These are Japanese sea snails. First made their appearance in the Black Sea ooh, in the 1940s, and they're now a, a major source of income for Turkey. The snails have become so important, scientists are now looking for sustainable ways of harvesting them. This is a new method of catching rapana. The existing methods are one, scuba diving, and two, dredging. Um, dredging obviously destroys the whole of the benthic ecosystem. Really not a good idea from an ecological point of view. The diving has obviously health and safety implications for the, the people involved in doing that. This is a much more sustainable method of, of catching these animals. The pots are actually baited with anchovy or mussel. The rapana are attracted to the bait and then pulled back out of the water. It's obviously replaced the original mussel industry, the original oyster industry, the clam industry. And it's just a great example of how, of how man is adapting to the changing ecosystem.
For the Black Sea, there will never be a return to the environment of the 1960s and 70s. But with care and attention, it could once again bring joy and satisfaction to the people who live around it. We can either go back to the situation we were in the bad old days or we can take another step forward. But everything is to play for.